And then, so David came back to New York City, sorry, he was working in a bookstore and was writing a lot of poetry. Um, he'd begun to start taking pictures and he was thinking about making art. And it's very important that he realized that what was going on in those days was every artist was doing about five or six different things, not just painting, not just making performances, not just videoing, they were doing everything, and acting and performing. And this is uh, his first six sort of well-known series of photographs. He made this Rambo mask and got his friend Brian Butterick, who actually is the person that started the Pyramid Club, uh, to walk around and pose in New York and took pictures of him. Brian just died last year. This one's a, one of my favorite ones, Rambo in the subway. Um, and these photographs got known by uh, some publications in New York City and were re you know, reproduced. And, uh, so people saw these photographs and started to know who David was. This is Brian Butterick at the Piers. And the Piers was a place on the west side where artists would go and uh, particularly gay men would go to meet other gay men. But it, these were abandoned piers that had had uh, various kind of types of businesses in them, including at one point uh, North Carolina, the New York uh, Correction Society, or Corrections, uh, New York City Corrections, had stored a lot of their documents there. And David and Kiki Smith, who you'll meet later, uh, a great artist, uh, discovered these drawings that were all mandated by the prison system of uh, insane people uh, had to do drawings. And they found all these insane drawings and they, unfortunately they're not safe, but you can see this uh, graffiti kind of drawing of the guy shooting up. This is kind of typical. And the next one, uh, this was a sort of an emblematic early uh, graffiti type drawing that David would paint all over the place. Uh, I heard a great story recently from Tommy Turner, who's a filmmaker who I just recently met actually, survived that period of time. And he was talking about how David and he went one night went across town doing graffiti in the Soho area, making stencil posters up, putting them on these very expensive storefront buildings in Soho in the middle of the night. You always had to have a guy with you when you were doing graffiti, someone to watch out for the cops. And then went and did a stencil, which I'll show you in a minute, in a minute and then they came back and he did this very same drawing in chalk uh, on uh, 8th Street and uh, Avenue B, or Avenue A, in front of David's friend's apartment. Peter Hujar was a photographer that was really mentored David. Uh, and it, Tommy Turner told me the story about them going over there into Soho and just spending a couple of hours doing stencils on all of the different galleries and then zipping back over in the middle of the night to draw this chalk drawing the same night. The energy was pretty intense. This is a pterodactyl, pterodactyl, pterodactyl from the piers that David worked on with some other painters, including Louis Frangella, who's got his show right now in New York. Um, and then this is one of the stencils he did. These would also be used for announcing club dates. For his, he had a band called Three Teens Kill Four, uh, which is a sonic band. David didn't play instruments, but his voice and recordings he did on the street became part of their shows. If you've seen the movie Basquiat, you've seen a little glimpse of uh, the Mud Club show when Basquiat's band was just tape loops and experimental music, which I, you know, very influential on a lot of the things that are going on these days. Um, so